Cheers to you guys. It's Friday. We are talking last call, which means final order cutoff, and it's coming right now. Hey, what's going on guys? It is Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics, helping to amplify your comic book collection through integrity and community. We do a lot of comic and pop culture related videos on this channel, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. And for all those that are always watching us on Friday nights, glad we're at the end of the work week. It is last call, and we're going to be giving you our 10 picks for comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this Monday, November 18th, 10 p.m. Eastern. Now, real quick, before we get into the list this week, one big announcement for all the Patreon members that are watching this right now. Remember, if you want to participate in that Simple Man's Comics Patreon Secret Santa, make sure you sign up by November 1st, because that's when it closes, and we will be drawing names shortly after. Now, if you're interested in participating in that and aren't a Patreon member, just go over to patreon.com forward slash Simple Man's Comics, sign up there. It's open to all Patreon members on all tiers, and we'll get you set up. But... Last call, we're recording this Thursday, but it airs on Friday so we could join in with everyone else. How's your week been, Jack? It's been good. I've been very busy. Um, enjoying our uh, first week of independence, though. Lots of great new content hitting the channel. Very excited. And, of course, we talk about this every week, man. This is the best show we do. It's our, our favorite. We get to kind of kick back, look into the crystal ball, see what the month has ahead of us for comic books and new comic book day and uh have a couple adult kool-aids that's right the majority if not all these books are 23 days that's when final order cutoff takes place so there's a lot of news cycle that can happen within that month a lot of stuff changes sometimes books are even pushed back past their final order cutoff date but we're telling you with the information we have and right now we're going to get into it with Guardians of the Galaxy number 12. This has three different covers. You're going to have that regular cover. There's a 2020 variant, which we talked about before. That's the Marvel-themed variant for the month. And there's a Declan Shelby variant, but the art is not available yet. But what else is important about this, Jack? Well, Brian, this is the last issue in the Donnie Cates Guardians of the Galaxy run. This is going to wrap up that 12-issue kind of uh, long, overarching arc that he has done. Um, and, you know, the solicitation lays this one on heavy and says that this is what Death of Inhumans, Silver Surfer Black, and Guardians of the Galaxy have all been leading up to. So I'm excited to see this one. There was some speculation that possibly issue number 11 could have some big event happening. It didn't happen. Um, I would expect Donny Cates to go out with a bang. So this is one I can't wait to read. I really enjoyed this Guardians of the Galaxy run. And this is one that I, I've got earmarked as being a great reader pick. One that I think is going to be kind of exciting. Donny Cates usually always delivers, but also has that tinge of, for my collectors out there, could be a major event, could be something important happening in this issue. Keeping it cosmic, but moving over to DC, we're talking Far Sector number two. We talked about Far Sector number one on this very show before Final Order Cutoff. It seems to be a hot title that just released this past week. Time will tell because it's still a couple days after release, but it's definitely a hot title. What about issue number two, Jack? Well, Brian, yeah, I, you said it, time will tell, but I got to say that this is this is my pick of a DC series to be paying attention to. And I think issue number one is going to have some legs for some time. But I also think issue number two is an issue to be on the lookout for. It's one not to sleep on. You, you mentioned there's only one cover, right? So th this is a book that I think DC, even DC maybe is anticipating a major drop off in orders. But the reason why... We saw prices spike so early in issue number one was because there was actually a shortage of available issues compared to the market. We had a lot of Simpleman's Comics family members mention that they did not see Far Sector on their shelves on New Comic Book Day. Um, and we're talking issue number one, a new series. And I think a lot of that is due to coming from Young Animal, which is kind of a smaller imprint within uh, DC Comics. Issue number two is definitely going to be interesting from a reader standpoint. I am excited. This is a kind of like a who done it murder mystery, right, Brian? So, you know, you got to kind of stick with this one and check it out. 
but also, again, for my collectors out there, um, especially you key collectors, there's we got to figure out who that flying character at the end of issue number one was, and when is that? That's definitely if it's a new character, definitely just a cameo, right? So we got to see when that first full appearance is going to be. So keep an eye out for issue number two. Um, it's one that is definitely on my hit list, and that's why we're talking about it right here on the Last Call Show. Right. What if it's a, a DC Warner Brothers crossover and it's Roadrunner? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. That would be massively disappointed. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> but I agree. Love the first issue. Really looking forward to pick up that second issue. And we're letting you know right now that it's hitting Final Order Cutoff this coming Monday night. Here's a book that Jack and I have been high on. We love the reader buzz on this alone. But we've talked about this FOC. We've talked about it on the Bolo Show. Spider-Man number three. This is going to have that regular cover. You're also going to have a 2099 variant by Giuseppe Camicoli. Then there's an incentive one in 25 variant. Looks to be from Olivia Coipel. I really like just the regular cover because this is a reader buzz pick for me. But what do we got going on with this, Jack? Yeah, I agree, Brian. I'm a regular cover guy with this series. Um, this is one I'm putting the set together. This is this is a series where I think that's where the long-term value is going to be placed, but it's definitely a reader buzz series. Now, I loved issue number one. Issue number one was probably in my top five favorite comics of 2019, which is probably a piece of content we'll do at some point on the channel come the end of the year. But issue number two to me was a little bit of a letdown. Um, it's always hard when you have one of those like action-packed banger issues to like kind of follow that up. Um, I remember almost feeling the same way with Absolute Carnage number two, but maybe not quite to the extent. But issue number three has some big promises in the solicit. Um, they say, you know, if you think you know what's going to happen with May and Peter, you have no idea. Um, so we'll have to see what kind of torture uh, J.J. and Henry Abrams have in store for our... Uh, um, familiar, uh, you know, Spider-Man characters as we really get into this Benji Parker story. But, you know, I'm all in for this one. I've got my Spider-Man shirt on, um, uh, ready to check out and see what, uh, New York's favorite hero has in store for us. Right. I agree. I thought issue number two is a little bit slow, but I kind of expect that considering it's being written by JJ Abrams and his son, you get that whole screenwriter, I think feel to it. So you're yeah. going to have you know, the number one issue, you're going to have some character building. But fully trust J.J. Abrams on this. We're both big fans of this title. I enjoy this, just like we've both talked. I enjoy this way better than the regular Amazing Spider-Man title right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Not even close. Moving away from the big two over to Image Comics, we are talking Project Christmas number one. This is going to have a regular cover. There's a variant by Frank Quitely. There's also a black and white Quitely variant as well as a blank variant. But this one's pretty interesting, don't you think, Jack? Definitely, Brian. Now, this is one where I can already see people complaining. Um, I can see my readers going, how can I get excited for something when I don't know what it is? I can see my speculator saying, well, I'm not going to speculate in a volume two um, because we know that that tends to not quite hold the weight of volume one. But I'm going to throw all that out the window and I'm going to say something to you, Brian. You and I have talked about this. we got to keep comics fun, right? This is a unique and interesting idea. I have so many questions about it. Um, this this is going to be a surprise. Are these books going to come bagged? Are they going to come sealed so we won't know till we after we buy them and open them? Um, how are they going to go about hiding this? So cover A, we don't know. It's a surprise. Um, well, tell them what it's about. We haven't, we haven't told them what the... Well, the, all we know is it's Mark Millar. That and it's Netflix. Mark Millar Netflix, right. Yep. It's, so it's, you got to go back and look at Mark Millar series. Yep. And you got to kind of sit there and say, well, what could it be? So we know that there's a Frank Quietly variant um, that immediately makes me think, is it Jupiter's Legacy? Yeah. Um, is it a is it a follow up? But they've already done a follow up to Jupiter's Legacy. So is it a volume three? It says it's one of his most popular um, series. Now they could. That, I have a feeling. This is just my gut feeling, Brian. That the Frank Quietly thing is kind of a, a 
a red herring. That's just to throw everybody off. Um, and, you know, in what direction could they be going? They, it's, you're not, it's not a Kingsman thing. It's not um, some of these already adapted properties because those aren't part of the Netflix deal. So we know that it has to be one of his um, ones that haven't hit the big screen yet. Um, I would think that it's not one of the newer ones that he recently did, like Magic Order or um, Reborn, just because, I don't know, would you define those as kind of like one of his most popular? I would think it's going to be something that's had some time to really enter into comic book lore. But again, this is all just speculation, I'm guessing. But this is what makes it fun. Um, I think this is a unique idea. Uh, I don't think it'll necessarily be duplicated by a bunch of people. But we see this in comic books when these kind of like gimmick ideas come up. They tend to work the first time you do them. They don't tend to work the second time. But I think this is cool. And that's why we're talking to you guys about this on the FOC show. Because if this gets any sort of heat, I think, I think shops, Brian, are going to be leery of ordering a lot of these. Uh, and, you know, because you just don't know what you're getting. Unless they get leaked information from Image or from Miller World directly. Um, I think that they will be cautious, and that could lead to a smaller print run. But we'll have to wait and see. I think that collectors will be curious and want to go in and buy this book on New Comic Book Day. So this may be one where you go ahead and put in your order for this FOC, which is why we're talking about it here. Yeah, I think um, the anticipation and the, the I don't want to say gimmick, but, you know, the art of how they're, publishing this will far outweigh the end result i might be wrong but whatever the book is uh, i think when the book comes out i think there's gonna be some excitement but i think the anticipation is higher than what the result of whatever the book will be but who knows um never an know. example an example similar to that is die 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 the way kirkman did that um that book some love it but it's it, it's not necessarily like a kirkman classic but the unique way he went about releasing that book just dropping it out of nowhere in stores. I just like to see comic publishers innovating and trying things new. Um, that's what makes the, the hobby fun. So this, uh, this to me is cool. So keeping with that small press, but moving over to IDW, we're going over Dying is Easy. This is going to have three different covers. There's a regular cover. There's a 1 in 10 incentive as well as a 1 in 25 incentive. And it's got Joe Hill, who we've talked previously on this show and other shows on this channel. Right, Jack? Right. You may be familiar with Joe Hill, of course, creator of Lock and Key. But he, right now he's on fire with the Hill House Productions over on DC's Black Label. But this is coming from IDW. And here he's teaming up with Martin Simmons from Punk's Not Dead, which is a popular image comics release. Here... They've got an interesting premise for a series. I gotta be honest with you guys, full disclosure, we made a little switch at the last second, put this one in, and I am pumped to talk about this book. We here we say, meet Sid Shit Talk Holmes, a disgraced ex-cop turned bitter stand-up comic, turned possible felon. In part one of Dying is Easy, Carl Dixon is on the verge of comedy superstardom, and he got there the dirty way. By stealing jokes. So we're talking about a little Carlos Mencia style action here. He's got a killer act, an ugly past, and more enemies than punchlines. So when someone asks Sid Holmes how much it would cost to have Dixon killed, Sid isn't surprised. In fact, he's already got a figure in mind. Now this one sounds like a movie or a TV show. They talk about part one, so you know they're going to build on the story. Joe Hill is a guy that's kind of got that Hollywood touch to him. And, Brian, we've talked about the, kind of the formula for IDW before, right? That if they've got one of these 1 in 25 incentives, it's something to pay attention to. Those books tend to be scarce. That's right, Jack. We've talked on this show as well as others. Whenever IDW has a 1 in 25, that's something to look out for because we don't see it that often. Usually when they do, it's for something big. So if I can get something, I'm definitely going to get that 1 in 25 cheap and before final order cutoff. Yeah, and this almost slipped past our radar, Brian, so I know it's going to slip past some other people's. Mm -hmm. 
back over to DC for a minute. We're talking about Year of the Villain, Hell Horizon number one. This is kind of a regular cover by Steve Epting. There's also a cover B, Ricardo Federici variant, as well as a blank variant for this. Right, and this is the kind of conclusion to this year-long Year of the Villain storyline that we've been seeing crossing over so many different titles. We've seen a lot of different characters become infected by the Batman Who Laughs, and now we're going to see kind of the end of this whole story. And DC Comics promises that this is going to be at a violent end. So we're looking at the world in DC Comics stands on the brink of destruction. In the pages of Justice League, Lex Luthor has evolved to his highest form, uniting the villains for an epic doom war. And while Batman and Superman are trying their best to uncover which heroes the Batman who laughs is infected with evil, finally we're going to get two supervillains forced to face each other in this series that begins in December, and they promise a violent ending. So if you've been paying attention and reading, uh, whether it's Hawkman or Supergirl or Batman, Superman, in so many different series is crossing over um, in, in different books, Justice League. We've seen this storyline play out. I know my people out there in Simple Wins Comics family love some Batman Who Laughs. So this is going to be an interesting series, definite reader buzz, one to check out, and uh, it'll be good to kind of wrap it and tie things up. And also, I'm a big fan of James Tinian, and I think he does a great job with these dark storylines. So I fully expect this one to deliver on expectations. I agree. This is one of those stories I think, especially with DC, a lot of people are down on right now. But I think a lot of these stories are really great stories. I think they're going to sit there for a while. And like you're seeing with some of those Marvel books, when you get further down the road in some of these other story arcs, these storylines are going to be revisited and they're going to be popular at that point. Either way, love Batman Who Laughs myself. Love this storyline, so I'm looking forward to this book. Red Mother number one. This comes from Boom Studios. This is going to have that regular cover by Jeremy Hahn. It's going to have a regular price variant as well as that regular priced foc variant that they like to do right before final order cutoff that's why we like to mention books like this on this show i'm a huge fan of jeremy Hahn. he is writing co-writing and he does the art for this book if you've read a book titled the realm jeremy Hahn is involved in that love that series so i'm interested to see what's going to happen with this book i love the solicit but jack tell us more about it well after losing her eye and the man she loves in a brutal mugging Daisy McDonough is left trying to put the pieces of her life back together. Just when she begins to think she can heal, move on, she begins to see strange things through the new prosthetic eye, and the Red Mother sees her in return. Um, this it really continues Boom Studios' kind of string of hits. I got to be honest with you, um, we've talked about Boom Studios' books. Seems like all of 2019, I think they have been the hot publisher um, certainly in independent comics, uh, but quite possibly in all of comics. Uh, we saw it with Once in Future, Something's Killing the Children, and now Folklords all being smash hits. There is an article that ran just a day ago on Bleeding Cool posing the question, will Red Mother be the next option indie from Boom Studios? We've seen um, Mimetic get optioned. We've seen... Um, the unsound. unsound get option, right? The Woods is now progressing on sci-fi. This has been a big year for Boom Studios. So this is one I expect to see. While my horror fans and horror is hot right now are going to read that solicit and say, yeah, I'm into that. Um, and you're right about Jeremy Hahn. He has a uh, writer and an artist who absolutely delivers. I think this one is going to get the speculator buzz. Um, I think that the speculators are going to be paying attention to this one. This is the one where I think there's a good chance they jump on board and grab those multiple copies, grab those different covers. And I would be on the lookout for a possible late edition, possibly an incentive, possibly a one-per-store variant. Now, we don't get that information at FOC time, but it, we want to make you aware that this has happened in the past. We didn't have the information of those variants. With Folklords, we got the 1 in 25. Literally the day we were shooting the FOC video, the one per store wasn't announced till a couple days before the release of the book. But we want to make you aware of that. This has all of that speculator buzz going for it. Um, this has a lot of attention of a lot of retailers out there. This isn't going to be a micro print, right? This is not going to be a 3,000 printed book. But we're still talking about a book that 
with the print runs that Boom is putting out there, certainly leaves meat on the bone. And it's something to be on the lookout for and pay attention to. I think this one is going to be talked about a lot over the next 23 days. Yeah, I definitely think you're going to see that continued trend with Boom Books and uh, additional late printings, as we've seen with Once in Future, Something's Killing the Children, Folklords now. So, yes, this might follow that. Um, but to be honest, I think if anyone's fan of Walking Dead and you see any of these covers and you think of this story, I think first thing that comes to mind to me is good old Carl, Carl oh. Grimes. But although they have nothing to do with each other by any means, but you see someone missing an eyeball, and that's the closest it, uh, event that I'm used to, to, to relating that to. So, yeah, good old Carl Grimes. But this is also a female, so. I digress. Now, Marvel wouldn't be Marvel without some, like, epic event or one shot that had a bunch of different writers and a bunch of different artists, and we're getting that right here with incoming number one. This is going to have writers involved such as Jason Aaron, Greg Pak, Al Ewing, Donnie Cates, Chip Zdarsky, and it goes on and on, as well as a bunch of different artists involved. And, of course, sticking with Marvel, there's a bunch of different covers for this. There's some of them that are important is there's a couple J. Scott Campbell. There's a Women of Marvel variant. There's a Hidden Gem J. Scott Campbell variant. But there's also, but there's also a Patrick Gleason premiere variant. Those are some of the ones to pay attention to. There's a lot more covers than that, but those are the ones that we're highlighting. But tell us more about this book, Jack. Well, Brian, this is a book that's been kind of talked about for months. We saw the imaging around Comic-Con season when uh, Marvel started teasing this. This is kind of the wraps up their 80th anniversary celebration of books that started with that Marvel Comics 1000. Um, this is definitely going to be a story that features the Masked Raider, which is a character we still don't know much about, right, that debuted in the last pages of Marvel Comics 1000 into Marvel Comics 1001. I would still say from a back issue standpoint, regular covers of Marvel Comics 1000 are still – solid as we still haven't figured out who this mass raider is but the solicitation for this book talks about to quote my favorite uh tv show the wire a stone cold whodunit and uh we're we're gonna have to get all of the marvel universe together to kind of solve this and figure this out there is a silhouette of a character featured on the cover that has been kind of speculated about it looks like this could date back to kind of the hulk war era of characters um so i think we're going to get kind of a reintroduction of a character i expect it to kind of spike some back issue sales for sure and a uh, lot like you said a lot of covers this is kind of a pick your poison which cover do you like think about the way marvel comics 1000 was i think that's what we're going to see for with this one but this is going to really wrap up everything marvel's been doing from a uh overarching publisher standpoint in 2019 and kind of set us up for whatever their next program and move is going to be in 2020. So if you were in on Marvel Comics 1000, 1001, uh, if you were you know, taking part in some of these major storylines that have been going on in, in 2019, I think this is one that you'll have to grab at least a reader copy of, right? You know, I think this is one that like every Marvel Comics reader, no matter what series, whether you're an Immortal Hulk guy with Al Ewing, like you mentioned, whether you're an X fan with Jonathan Hickman, who I think you didn't mention, whether you're uh, Donny Cates with Venom or Absolute Carnage, no matter what, uh, Jason Aaron with Thor, I think you're going to have to grab this one and kind of see where this progresses. So I expect this one to have a huge print run, but, you know, one to pay attention to. And one reason why we talk about books on The Last Call Show isn't just for access to books, Brian, but also for discounts. Because the reality is a lot of retailers offer very large discounts if you put your order in uh, before final order cutoff. So this is a book where it'll be heavily printed. It should be readily available on release date. But if you go ahead and get your order in now, you may be able to save a few dollars. Right. Stone Cold Who Done It, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't Stringer Bell, Avon Barksdale, or Marlo Stansfield. No, you know what though? I'd be excited if it was. Marvel would have me hooked. <laughs> yeah, give us a wire com give us a wire <laughs> yeah. comic. Yes, yes. IDW or Boom, come on, give us the Wire comic. Moving back over to IDW. It's been a while since we talked about some Ninja Turtle heat, but we got that Centennial 
issue with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 100. This one's going to have a bunch of different covers between the publisher, store exclusives. Speaking of store exclusives, make sure you keep an eye out at frankiescomics.com as well as their other channel sponsor, slabbedheroes.com, because they're going to have exclusive variants up on those sites as well. But for other covers, there's going to be a 1 in 10, a 1 in 25, and a 1 in 50 variant for this. Right now, we've all been on board for uh, City at War. This entire time, we've gotten some major monumental events throughout this series from the city being turned uh, into mutants to the uh, introduction of Jenica, the fifth Ninja Turtle. And some things that we know about this upcoming issue are whatever kind of this like cataclysmic events that we've had happen – so far in the book, seems like it's going to continue past issue 100 because the solicitation for issue 101 talks about some like real almost apocalyptic times. We also know Jenica isn't going anywhere. She's on the cover of 101. Um, she's also got a solo series coming out. The cover A for 100, we see almost like a kaiju dragon in the background. So I think we're going to be doing some major battle. We get some favorites like uh, looks like Casey Jones. Um, on the cover and uh i think this is going to be a major ninja turtle story for ninja turtles fans now you mentioned retailer exclusives there's upwards of 60 different covers for this book from various retailers now the speculators are going to complain about that but my ninja turtle fans this is heaven i mean this is just pick your favorite artist he's probably got a cover out there um, shout out to our channel sponsors, like you mentioned, Slabbed Heroes and uh, Frankie's Comics, who are going to be bringing some heat with issue number 100. Kevin Eastman and his fan club have books. Uh, ben Bishop uh, and his fan club have books. Every major uh, person associated with this series ha has their own cover. But this is a reader buzz book for me, Brian. I've been on board with this series. I've been loving this series. And I can't wait to see how this thing ends. Ninja Turtles 50 was a kind of an example very similar to this where it was like the anticipation was huge. Speculators and collectors complained because of the higher print run, the number of store exclusives. But you know what? It was a great read and it led into issue number 51, which gave us a new character in Jenica. So I am on board for this for the same reason. I think this is going to be a fun read. I think there's going to be some cool cover art uh, to add to my Ninja Turtle personal collection. And it gets me excited to turn the page into the next chapter of Turtle Saga and check out issue 101. Right. So every artist is doing a cover pretty much like you said. But I will say that if you're a fan of Bill Cosby and picture pages... I don't think there's going to be a variant for that because I don't think he's doing much drawing right now. So, sorry. <laughs> yeah, just about every artist. <laughs> then the last book we're going to talk about is Venom number 21. I believe this kicks off that whole Venom Island again, but this is going to have numerous covers as well as a couple store exclusives, as well as there's the regular cover. There's a Kerry Randolph 2099 variant, there's a Mark Bagley variant, and a Paolo Rivera variant. Right, and the solicit for this one doesn't give much information. It just says Venom Island begins here. <laughs> Enough said. Uh, so. You know, that's all they're giving us. They're just hitting us with enough said. Uh, yeah, it says, you are here with the map. <laughs> right. That's that's it. And uh, that's all you need to know. So we know that this starts off the next uh, Venom story arc. I think that if you've been reading Donny Cates' run on Venom, there's going to be something within this issue um, that lets us know kind of where we're going. I think first appearances aren't out of the question. Deaths aren't out of the question. Donnie likes to start off with a bang. The other thing is, for my back issue bolo people, I'm sure you're aware of this already, but Amazing Spider-Man 347, that is the first appearance of Venom Island. That book has gotten a lot of attention. It has that great Todd McFarlane skull cover. Um, that is a back issue to be on the lookout for if you can get it cheap, especially leading into this issue. But the, this book releases, um, usually these books release 23 days. Some of these Marvel books that we're talking about that have a FOC 
um, of Monday the 18th actually don't release till Christmas Day, and this is one of them. So this is one that uh, I know um, I may have to figure out. I don't know how they're going to do that, right? Because like a lot of shops aren't going to be open on Christmas Day. So are, are this, are this going to be a day after Christmas thing? Is it going to be um, – are some shops going to be slinging some books a day early? This is going to be an interesting thing to kind of see how this whole whole thing works out. Um, are there going to be any some smart shops who decide, you know what, Brian, I'm going to open up on Christmas Day uh, after the presents, let you go get some comic books? Because, man, it would be cool to kick back, feed up by the fire, and uh, read a little Venom Island. Yeah, I certainly hope. There's no comic book shops that open up Christmas Day. I don't care what it is. Don't start that trend. It's already bad enough with Thanksgiving, you know, you work retail. My wife works retail. Yeah. There, there's no comic book in the world that I want to read enough to start the trend of opening Christmas Day. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it for sure. But not Christmas Day. <laughs> I'd like to read it on Christmas Day. I don't know that I want to run out to the shop on Christmas Day. <laughs> uh, so it'd be, it'd be cool if stores have the ability to sell them maybe on the 24th yeah um a day early but it will ha i mean again i don't have any information this is just something we're see we're seeing the solicits we're noticing that a uh, new comic book day falls on the 25th it's gonna be interesting to see as an industry how this is handled so there it is guys those are our 10 picks for comics that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night at 10 p.m. Now, the majority of these books are actually releasing December 11th, but a lot of those Marvel books we talked about are December 18th. And as always, Jack is here to give us those later printings that are hitting FOC as well. Now, there's only a couple this week, Brian, but it's important to note that people need to be on the lookout, check social media, because ones can get announced at the very last second. A lot of times, these only have very short weekend-style uh, final order cutoff periods, but from Image Comics, we have Undiscovered Country, number one, the third printing. And from small independent publisher, It's Alive, we have Pink Lemonade, number one, the second printing. There it is, short and sweet, and as always, if you want to see that full final order cutoff list between comics, books, toys, cards, all that is up on simplemanscomics.com right now. Also, make sure you're checking out that paid also, make sure you're checking out SimpleMansComics.com Tuesday nights, Wednesday morning, because that's when we're putting up that bolo list there as well. And there's going to be more content coming to that. Absolutely. Yeah. We've And with that bolo list, we've got a, uh, a little long-term play of the week explanation being thrown up there before Thursday. So you can get a chance before you hit the LCS to hear my explanation of why I think that that book – Whatever book it is that's selected is the long-term play of the week. And with that being said, I'm Brian Wood. And I'm Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. Remember, buy what you like. That way you'll always be happy with your collection. Window pane, puffy plain Jane. Let him second guess me. Wanna cop the Porsche with the Porsche of the skin. Whip the wheels at the horse of the Why they trash the chore on my list? Out of this orbit, I saw with the pen. I'm eating good, Miss Caloric is shit. I sipped the potion and poured it in. I own the title, she poured it. Opportunity, knock at the door, then I grin. They rush for the doors, then they...